Alright, guys, here's the question that, we, that I promised that I would do a, a video on regarding this trend. So the question says, determine the magnitude and the nature magnitude and the nature of the forces in AD. So AD is this line. Then DC, which is from this point up to there, so which is this member. Okay. Now, <clears throat> before we can start doing those things, what we need to know is that this is a, a frame. It is made up of that, that member from A to C, from B to C, from A to B, and so on. So this is a member that is a member that is a member that is a member. So this forms what is known as a frame. So we cannot determine those members without knowing the reaction. So the first thing that we need to know is get to know the reactions at the support. So if the reactions are not given, then we need to calculate for those reactions. Um, so a simple way to get the reactions is first get the get or notice the angles, the best angles of that. If you notice that the best angles are the same, which means this force is going straight at the center of that distance. So even if you're not given that distance, you can always say that that force will go at the, at the, at the center. So what you do is the same one we are calculating for the reactions in those beams, you create just one horizontal beam. This goes to the center, and then you have your reactions. So we have that force, which is this one, the 20 kilometers. We have another force, which is the 20 kilometers. Now, remember what I said? This 20 is that, and it is going at half the center since the best angles are the same. Whether it is 45, 45, that one will go at the center. Whether it is 30, 30 in this case, it will go at the center. So that is what we do. So if I say the distance from the from D to A, if I say the distance is 10 meters, then it means here to be 5, and the other side should be 5 meters. If I say it's 8, then it will be 4 meters per meters. As long as it goes to the center, then you can say moments at one support and moments at another support. So we can say moments at at D, then we do those clockwise, anti-clockwise uh, moments. So our turning point is at, at D, moments, at D. When 20 pushes downwards, this is a uh, anti clockwise. This one is also anti clockwise. Then A is a clockwise. So remember, sum of clockwise moments is equal to sum of anti clockwise moments. Our clockwise moment, we have A times the distance that we have chosen, which is 10, is equal to 20 times 5 plus 20 times 10 as our distance, this 20 times 10 up to D, this 10, this 20 times 5 up to our D as our turning point. Then we calculate this one. This will be 10 A, this will be 100, that's 200 over 10, we divide by 10, A is equals 2, this gives us 30 kilometers. And if we take moments now on the other support, moments a D comes back, A becomes our turning point. Now on our beam, this now change based on our new turning point. D becomes anti-clockwise. This 20 becomes clockwise, and that 20 does not have any moments. This 20 does not have any moments. So just deal with these two. Um, we say 20 times 5 should be equal to D times 10. We divide by 10, we divide by 10. This as of that, D will be equal to 100 divided by 10, which is 10 kilometers. <coughs> and when we add these two reactions, D and A, we'll notice that they will give us 40. 10 plus 30 will give us 40, which is the same one as the forces that are acting on this field, 20 going downwards, 20 going downwards, they give us a total of, of 40 newtons. Then we take those reactions, your correct reactions is what you need. If you have the wrong reactions, given your beam or your, the, the magnitude of the forces would be wrong. So for A, we say this is 30, 
kilometers. If the units are kilometers, also the answer will be kilometers. T is 10 kilometers. All right, so now we look at the members. First, we calculate for the first member they ask is for AD. AD, which is this member. So we take this member and we look at if we take this side of our reaction, if we take this side of our reaction, what we have is that at this point, we have this AD, we have this, and we have that. There are too many unknowns. We know this is a point, it's going straight down, but we don't know how much this one is, and we have that force. So we, we might as well avoid this in this order. But AD, which is this, also reaches on this part. This is still AD. We might as well use this one because it won't give us one, two, and three, <clears throat> which will give us now using 10. At this corner that I've circled, what you have is these three forces. You have your 10 kilometers, you have your AD, which is this one, and also you have your D, DC. So just this corner to give you your DC, to give you your AD, but for now let's first calculate for our AD. And also don't forget your angle, which is our 30 degrees. So now what you do with this 10, you take this 10, you bring it on this other side such that it forms a triangle of forces. So this 10, we are bringing it out, we are placing it there, which will be 10 kilometers on this side. 10 kilometers is going up, which means DC will be going in this direction and AD will be going in that direction. It forms a triangle of forces and the triangle of forces is always balanced. It's a polygon of forces. The vertical components of DC and the horizontal components of AD, they all add up to this uh, DC. It forms a triangle of forces. All right, so for, for us to calculate AD, we take this with reference to our angle, this guy will be opposite. With reference to our angle, AD is our adjacent, and you can use tan theta is equal to your opposite over your adjacent. So we say tan 30 is equal to our opposite, which is 10 over our adjacent AD, which we are looking for. Yeah, so uh, whatever you cross multiply, you divide and so on, you find yourself with AD is equal to let me write on the other side. Now this Okay, so tan 30 over tan 30. Okay, then when you add this, this will give us Then divided by tan 30. It will give us 17.321 kilometers. Now, this is AD. Now, the question says the magnitude and the nature. What we have is just the magnitude. So, how we determine the nature, there are only two types. It's either a tie or a strut. If we look at the direction on our small triangle here, AD is pushing in that direction, which is this corner, which means there is a force on our frame itself. There is a force that is pushing in this direction, coming from D going towards A. Now, if there is a force pushing that side, at A there will also be another force pushing in that direction towards D. So, which means when you look at these two forces, it is the force that looks like this, and it is called a tie. So, you can only determine from your triangle, look at the arrows where they are pointed. We only put this arrow after we put our 10 going upwards, our DC going that one in that direction. They, the forces chase each other and they form up an equilibrium of forces. So we'll say this 17.321 will call it a tie. So which means we have answered our our the magnitude and the nature of those forces. If you forget whether it's a tie or a, a strike, you can as well just use the arrows. The same arrows that you have seen here, you can use those arrows and just indicate your arrows like that. And that will also give you some marks if you forget whether it's a tie or a strike. Then you go on to calculate for the DC. We still refer to the same triangle, but now we won't be calculating for this uh, adjusted will be calculated for the hypotenuse. Therefore, 
uh, the ratio that you can use from your trigonometry ratios is we have the opposite. Always refer to the opposite since it's the 10, which is correct. I will not refer to the 17 because I've rounded it off. It will slightly change my answer, but I would rather compare it to the, to the 10. So what we're going to use is your sine. Sine theta says it's what? Opposite for my opposite. Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So we know our angle is 30, our opposite, which is 10, our hypotenuse, which is TC. One, that's the one we are looking for. You cross multiply, you do all the calculations. TC will end up being 10 over sine 30. Then we wave that in our calculator, sine 30 is 0.5. So 0 0.5 will do that to give us three. I say well, I mean you are, you are here at your manifestation. So we have to use. So we have that 20 newtons. You can confirm that with your with the, the calculator. But I think that's that's correct. So now we determine the magnitude, that 20 kilonewtons is the magnitude. Then we look at our arrow where it is going. Now, remember this is on our circle where we're circle on this corner, which means there's a force that is pushing in that direction, which is the 20, which means on the other side, there's also another force which is pushing in that direction and it gives us a force which is pushing in both ends, which is now a strut. So this 20 kilonewtons is a strut. We can just use the arrows, we can forget those names. <laughs>